Govinda Sri Advaita Gaur Bhakti Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So in these series of verses spoken by Kapila Dev in the third canto describing the process of pure devotional service we come upon a particular verse that is what is uh, foundational to every other verse that we have discussed up until now. So it's more like the conclusion. Satam prasangan mamavirya sambhidu bhavanti hitkarna rasayana kata najosinat asva apavargavatmani strada vratirvatira nukramasyati Translation, in the association of pure devotees, discussion of the pastimes and activities of the Supreme Person of God who is very pleasing and satisfying to the ear and the heart. By cultivating such knowledge, one gradually becomes advanced on the path of liberation. Thereafter, he is freed and his attraction becomes fixed. Then real devotion and devotional service begin. <laughs> Srila Prabhupada's purport. Excuse me a minute, I have to go find my glasses. I'll be right back. The process of advancing the process of advancing in Krishna consciousness and devotional service is described here. The first point is that one must seek the association of persons who are Krishna conscious and who are engaged in devotional service. With such association, one can, without such association, one cannot make advancement. Simply, simply by theoretical knowledge or study, one cannot make any appreciable advancement. One must give up the association of materialistic persons and seek the association of devotees because without the association of devotees, one cannot understand the activities of the Lord. Generally, people are convinced of the impersonal feature of the absolute truth. Because they do not associate with devotees, they cannot understand that the absolute truth can be a person and have personal activities. This is a very difficult subject matter. And unless one has personal understanding of the absolute truth, there is no meaning to devotion. Service or devotion cannot be offered to anything impersonal. Service must be offered to a person. Non-devotees cannot appreciate Krishna consciousness by reading the Srimad Bhagavatam or by any other Vedic literature wherein the activities of the Lord are described. They think that these activities are fictional, manufactured stories because spiritual life is not explained to them in the proper mood. To understand the personal activities of the Lord, one has to seek the association of devotees. 
And by such association, when one contemplates and tries to understand the transcendental activities of the Lord, the path to liberation is open and he is free. One who has firm faith in the Supreme Personality of God has becomes fixed and his attraction for association with the Lord and the devotees increases. Association with devotees means association with the Lord. Devotees who make this association develops the consciousness for rendering service to the Lord. And then being situated in a transcendental position of devotional service, he gradually becomes perfect. Hmm. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jaya. So again, continuation of the previous point, but now it culminates in a more foundational principle of how devotional service and association are factually uh, interwoven in such a way that you cannot separate the two. Krishna consciousness means consciousness of Krishna. And consciousness of Krishna is found in the association of devotees. Now, we may, so, we may also have an idea or a conception of what is association with devotees. And that conception may be partially right or to some degree right. But real uh, the association means devotees means to associate with Krishna. <laughs> because in through association with Krishna, we can gain the association of devotees and through the devotees association, we gain the association of Krishna. We can associate with Krishna by hearing about Krishna. As this verse, uh, what we say goes right to the point. Satam prasangam mamavirya sambhido bhavanti rit karna. Rit karna. Rit means heart, karna means ear. That there's a nectar. Satam prasangam mamavirya. Bhavanti rit karna. Rasayana. Rasayana means nectar or sweetness. Kata, that sweetness. That is our association with Krishna through hearing about him. Of course, that association can extend itself, but this foundation as explains by the Acharyas is mentioned that there are nine processes of bhakti, Shravanam, hearing about Krishna, Kirtanam, speaking, glorifying Krishna, remembering Krishna, serving Krishna, worshiping Krishna, offering prayers to Krishna, serving his lotus feet, personal service, um, becoming a friend of Krishna and surrendering everything in devotional service. Now, as the Acharyas, and particularly Srila Prabhupada makes this point continuously, that all of these nine processes are found foundational on the process of hearing. We chant based on what we hear. We remember by what we hear. We pray by what we hear. We serve and we develop a knowledge based on how to serve by what we hear. And this goes on through all other eight processes. So this hearing, Shravanam, is the way in to the path of pure devotional service and it is the means for developing pure devotional service. So one who develops eagerness to hear about Krishna, this is an indication that one is making advancement in devotional service. We can... Uh, we can... Um, gate we can gauge ourselves and how we are making advancement by how eager we are to hear about Krishna. 
we can use that as a barometer for an indication on how much we are progressing. The more we are eager to hear about Krishna, this is an indication we are making nice spiritual progress. Because, because Krishna consciousness centers around developing the process of knowing Krishna through serving Krishna and hearing about Krishna. How can we serve Krishna? We can serve Krishna by doing activities that are practical and carrying out various services, such as cooking, deity worship, or any of the practical services that make up the uh, gamut of devotional activities, but they're all centered around hearing. When we, the more we develop a hearing, the more we develop an attraction because Krishna is all attractive. And therefore, it, as it says here, uh, Ritkarna, Rasayana Kata, it becomes pleasing to the heart and to the ear, both. And that pleasing is that sweet taste that comes from devotional service. And as Prabhupada prefaces the entire discussion, he says the process of advancing in Krishna consciousness and devotional service is here. Maharaj Parikshit heard from Sukadeva Goswami continuously for seven days. It is explained in that narration that after six days, Sukadeva Goswami had completed nine cantos of Srimad Bhagavatam without a break. Before he began Krishna's activities in Vrindavan, he stopped and he, he reflected and spoke to uh, Maharaj Pariksha and he said, Maharaj, do you feel tired? Do you want a break? In other words, do you want to stop for a little while? Do you want to do something, some water, something? Oh. Maharaj Pariksha immediately responded, please continue. This is where I find the most happiness about Krishna's pastimes of Vrindavan. So, and then of course, Sukadeva Goswami, after hearing the response of Maharaj Pariksha became even more enthusiastic to engage in that process of devotional narrations of Krishna's pastimes. And after seven full days, when he had completed the entire Srimad Bhagavatam, Maharaj Parikshit had developed complete fearlessness. Although he was about to die and he knew it, and there was no changing that. In fact, he even went to meet his destination, destiny he had not the slightest bit of fear because he knew his consciousness had been fully purified through the process of hearing. So this is a very powerful process. It's a, the, high, the most recommended of all processes, but we have to make sure we hear from those who can, who are situated in the process of devotional service. We have a class of people who like to do Bhagavat Saptaha, which is they go right to the 10th canto. They gather many people together through advertising. And then they begin their program of narrating Krishna's pastimes for so many days, usually seven days, trying to imitate the, the uh, Maharaj Pariksha and Sukadeva Goswami. They're not qualified to speak and they, they do it as a business. They usually get some remuneration from it. And uh, the people who come, of course, some of them are sincere to hear about Krishna and they get some benefit because, but because it says that, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, milk touched by the lips of the servant serpent has poisonous effects. 
So the milk of Krishna consciousness, this kata, Krishna kata, becomes polluted by the intention of the speaker who is there for personal gain. Okay. So that, and this goes on in the name of uh, imitating or replicating uh, hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And also devotees have to be very, very discriminating in who we hear from. There are many people, especially today with the availability of the internet, you can find so many so-called spiritual persons who like to speak philosophical teachings based on authorized scriptures, such as Bhagavad Gita and others. Um, they're not qualified. They give some impersonal interpretation. It's like that one person who actually, I mean, Prabhupada didn't have a Gita when he first began his Krishna consciousness movement. So he was using one Gita by uh, Radha Krishna. And in one verse, Manmana Bhava Bhav Bhavto Mam Yaji Mam Namaskaru, 934 in the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. Um, he quotes the verse, Radha Krishna, and in his commentary, purport, he says, it is not to Krishna we have to surrender to, but it's the unborn, unmanifested, indwelling aspect within the Supreme. When Prabhupada had one devotee read that, Prabhupada became quite uh, angry. <laughs> In fact, he showed his anger quite powerfully. He said, just see, Krishna is saying surrender to me. He's saying no, sir, surrender to something else. So we get a lot of misinterpretations. But the thing is that they, the way they speak, they can make the language sound very interesting and very acceptable. In other words, they have the power of vakya uh, from, from, the, from performing some austerities. But they use their austerities in order to gain followers or some kind of pecuniary gains. And because of that, they pollute the whole science of hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So one has to be very good. Better to hear from Srila Prabhupada or from those who are following Srila Prabhupada strictly. Not just anybody, but those who are following Prabhupada strictly. And if you hear from Prabhupada regularly, you get the essence. Not only do you get the essence, you understand what is not. I mean, Prabhupada was criticized many times by people who became quite disturbed when Prabhupada would speak out against what is not Krishna consciousness. He would say, we have to explain what is not along with explaining what is because people will not be able to discriminate unless they know what to avoid and how that uh, knowledge is being presented in such a flowery, flowery, a presentation which still kind of charms the minds of the hearers and makes the speaker sound very knowledgeable. <laughs> One has to be very careful. So to stay chaste, just like they say, if you want a marriage to work nicely, the wife has to be very chaste. If the wife is very chaste to the husband, then the marriage works good. When the husband goes out of his way to facilitate all the needs and more of the wife when the, high, the wife is very chaste and faithful to the husband. So this word, this principle, it works also in devotional life. We stay chaste to the previous acharyas, especially Srila Prabhupada. Um, because Srila Prabhupada is the delineation, and I use that word delineation, of the knowledge that has been received previously for us to understand what what every what is being given to us 
in the simplex succession. He distills it, he gives his realization, and he presents it according to time, place, and candidate. Just like uh, Srila Prabhupada's purports in Bhakti Vedanta, uh, in his Srimad Bhagavatam, he would spend maybe hours just on one purport, thinking how to present this knowledge to the Western mentality. The principles are there, but everything previously was given in a more uh, compact, compact, what's the word, compact, a compact form. Now he's unraveling that and presenting it in different angles so we could understand it according to time, place, and candidate. And so that's Srila Prabhupada. He was expert at doing that. And some people say, mistakenly say, they say that Prabhupada didn't give everything. But it was his, it was his holiness, Bhakti Churu Swami Maharaj, who gave lecture after lecture describing how Srila Prabhupada covered everything. Uh, that everything that is possibly needed for us to go back home, back to Godhead. Um, and that takes a little bit of time, hearing, reflecting, studying, comparing to see that ha actually what Prabhupada gave was Srimad Bhagavatam in perfection, in his perfection. So if we stay chaste to Srila Prabhupada's teachings and those who repeat Srila Prabhupada without adding their own misinterpretations, then we can will always be in the right position to receive that knowledge because knowledge is foundational for understanding the process of devotional service. That's why one of the uh, an artist, an artist means that which is unwanted, is to not understand how bhakti works. We have to understand how this science works. And therefore, Srila Rupa Goswami has given us nectar of devotion in which Srila Prabhupada has given his explanations along with Srila Rupa Goswami's foundational theoretical and philosophical teachings. Every question or every aspect of devotional service is practically and philosophically explained nicely in nectar of devotion and nectar of instructions, both by Srila Rupa Goswami, both commented on and expanded upon by His Divine Grace Srila Prabhupada. So there is no dearth of knowledge available. And uh, if we develop that eagerness for hearing, so then again, how do you get that eagerness for hearing? Sometimes we get that question. Well, um, how, you know, I know I'm supposed to hear, but I don't have any taste for hearing. Or if I do hear for a little while, I get tired and I look for something else to do. The Bhagavatam also gives that formula. Sushru Shrasya Vasudeva Kataruchi Shanmayat Seva Vipa Purnya Tirtama Sevana. This verse from Srimad Bhagavatam 1 to 16 explains um, Shushu Shrasya Yeah, You can put that verse up on the board if you like. Vrindavana. Yeah. Uh, oh, twice born sages, by serving those great souls who are completely freed from all vice, great service is done. By such service, one gains affinity for hearing the messages of Vasudeva. Right to the point, serving great souls who are free from all material vice. This is the greatest of all service, and because of one death, one develops 
an affinity, that means an attraction, a tendency towards hearing the messages of Vasudev. Vasudev means one who is coming from Vasudev, and the name of Krishna's father was Vasudev. Vasudev also means one who is situated everywhere. It has two meanings. Vasudev means the son of Vasudev, and it also means one who is situated everywhere. Just like we say, Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. That means I worship Vasudev, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who is situated everywhere. So we want to develop that eagerness. And so here is the means. Look for a chance to serve great personalities. The more we engage in service of great souls, then our path to Krishna consciousness is wide open. And that is connected also with the verse for today, that in the association of devotees, these hearing and chanting become sweeter and sweeter and more sweet. So this is our process. We don't have to add anything to it. It's very simple. It's very direct. It is um, recommended. And so uh, that recommendation is the means for self-realization. <laughs> Okay, uh, we can go back to the, uh, the original verse that we spoke on today. And so here, um, it says, when we undergo these discussions in the association with devotees, then real devotion and devotional service begins. So prior to that, we're practicing devotional service. Now, devotional service becomes uh, fundamental. It becomes solid. Hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. So, in our very busy lifestyle, which has been somewhat curtailed by the present situation in the world, uh, we find sometimes where do we find time to hear and chant the glories of the Lord? If we're living in the temple, it becomes quite easy. But if we're not, then what happens is that we have to make arrangements to hear and chant. So devotees have groups where they come together and hear and chant the glories of the Lord. If you can do it within your family, and this is good for all the family members, or attend discussions that are being conducted in the temples or in other similar venues. So we have a lot to hear about. <laughs> and the amazing thing, I, I don't know if the word amazing is the right word. I think I would say the most um, uh, beneficial of all aspects of hearing is that you can hear the same thing that you heard before and get newer and more realizations and understanding. This is the dynamic of transcendental knowledge. Transcendental knowledge is unlimitedly, uh, what is it, dynamic. Dynamic means it doesn't reach a point of conclusion. This knowledge is unlimited. The more you read and hear, the more you understand. Even if you hear the same thing over and over again, you're getting more and more newer and better realizations on the same on these principles. So we've been giving I mean, this this knowledge is is powerful because it's directly related to the lotus feet of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And it attracts us to Krishna. It attracts us to serving Krishna. And that is our success. Okay, so we can stop here and see if there's any discussion on this. 
Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. Uh, if you have any questions, comment or realization, please unmute yourself or you can type in chat window. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Glory to Srila Prabhupada Maharaj. Uh, this is a, a very important uh, points have been mentioned in this verse, which I have seen in a practical uh, application uh, recently over the last year, where we were distributing Srimad Bhagavatam with the children. And uh, the point that struck me, so I have uh, you know, a, a comment and, 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 and uh, two questions. So the comment is that this is so true. Uh, we are distributing Bhagavatam during Badra and, we, and, and, and they were favorable. Some of them were, let's say, supportive of Krishna consciousness and they, they invited Bhagavatam. And what I realized that even though they have Bhagavatam, they have the Sukruti of accepting Bhagavatam and inviting to their homes even after reading it, uh, yes, it does have a change of consciousness slowly, but what I realized that unless they have, I, I put them in association of devotees and they start to do some service or hear from devotees, not just from the book, it will, it will hinder their progress and it will, they, they, they will not make that much progress. In fact, they might even stop. Uh, so that is something uh, very true, which is... <laughs> The verse is saying from Bhagavatam and what you have explained, Maharaj, that you can read a book, but unless you hear from realized souls uh, about the pastimes of Krishna, the transformation doesn't happen. Yeah, your your analysis is con is conducive, or it is reflective of one very important verse in the Bhagavatam: "Nasta prayeshu abhidreshan nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloki bhakti bhagavati nice ki." Um, in that purport, Prabhupada says, "Bhagavat person and Bhagavat book, both are needed. Person Bhagavat and book Bhagavat together they make up the package of knowledge of Bhagavat." Yeah, that's why that verse. Yeah, you can you can share. Uh, by regular attendance in classes on Bhagavatam and by rendering service to the poor devotee, all that is troublesome in the heart is almost completely destroyed. And loving service unto the personality of God who is praised by transcendental song is established as an irrevocable fact. And here, Prabhupada's beginning. Here is the remedy for eliminating all inauspicious things in the heart, which are considered the obstacles on the path of realization. The remedy is the association of Bhagavatam. There are two types of Bhagavatas, namely book and devotee Bhagavatam. Both the Bhagavatams are competent remedies, and both of them, or either of them, can be good enough to eliminate obstacles. A devotee Bhagavatam is good as the book Bhagavatam, because the devotee Bhagavatam leads his life in terms of the book Bhagavatam, and the book Bhagavatam is full of information about the personality of Godhead and his pure devotees, who are also Bhagavatam. Bhagavatam book and person is identical. So for most people who have, as you mentioned, a process of being introduced to the process of hearing about Krishna, the person has to be there because the person can explain everything according to what is written in the book. Now for yes, those Maharaj. who are advanced, those who are advanced and fixed, they can get knowledge from either one. Mm -hmm. So Maharaj, we realized that, and I think we are now putting up some program and the Sankirtan team here at the manor to try to form groups of devotees that they can read Bhagavatam or uh, with those individuals uh, to help them progress. Uh, 
uh, and then connect them to other programs. So this this is this is a a, a good uh, reaffirmation of what is happening. What? Thank you. Let me let continue. It's what is most needed is to somehow inspire people to take the Krishna consciousness. And we have the tools, it's just putting it together and presenting it so it becomes interesting. Yes, Maharaj, thank you. Uh, and Maharaj, the question I had is, um, hearing is important. So yes, uh, you know, we have times and times um, we hear, we have to discriminate and we have to hear from proper sources. Um, but sometimes, Maharaj, we also hear from speakers within within ISKCON. And sometimes I, well, I'm telling open my experience that I, when I hear and I feel that that's not right or that's something, it, it doesn't sound right what, what's been said. How should, what should be my attitude and how should I approach those scenarios? You should question it. But it doesn't sound them, right. Yeah, if it doesn't sound right, you should question it. But many of them are on YouTube's or on Facebooks and things like that recently in the COVID times and uh, and, and before as well. But where there is no opportunity to ask questions, how shall we approach those things? Um, well, I I've I've gotten questions from YouTube viewers, Facebook viewers on things that I've said. They are concerned to reach me, so they write me and ask me, "Well, you said this. What does it mean?" That happened when I gave my lecture about vaccinations, you know, which was posted on YouTube. And um, I said something that needed clarification. And so I got two questions based on that statement I made. And uh, when I explained it to one of the person in the form of an email, he wrote back saying, thank you. And now I understand what you were saying. It's clear. And the other person never changed and kept his own reasoning. So, but that one person was very much appreciating the fact that I took time to explain. When we say something, we have to be accountable to what we say. In other words, we have to be able to back it up if we are questioned and challenged upon it. If you don't challenge or question people on, on what they say, then we, that means we're accepting it. And if we don't accept it, but at the same time, uh, we, don't, we don't accept it, but at the same time, we don't know what is the actual standard, we remain confused. There's a lot of people who like to quote Prabhupada, but they quote him out of context. And because it's out of context, it has a different, you know, meaning. Or it's the meaning they want to give to it. Mm -hmm. There's so many statements Prabhupada made that required clarification. Same with those who speak on behalf of Srila Prabhupada or in Prabhupada's movement. Question. <laughs> if you don't question, then you have to either accept or stay confused. <laughs> so, you know, it doesn't give you much choice. So I think, I think, no thanks. I think so you're encouraged to ask uh, through any medium to clarify. That's good. But sometimes we're, it's obvious that what they're saying is out of context. Sometimes you can find your own understanding through your own research on the same point that's being said. I mean, I come across this continuously about what Prabhupada said about certain things and people take it and apply it to what they want people to understand based on the subject matter they're speaking of, which may be wrong. <laughs> Th 
thank you maharaj um i have another question but i think if some uh, i mean uh, the other devotees can ask and if still have we have time then i can i can post the, the other question that's okay maharaj thank you hari krishna So, Dittesh Prabhu, we don't have any questions right now. Maybe you can continue, please. Okay, Ma. Okay. Um, so, the second question is, Maharaj. I think um, I, I very much like the point what you made, and I have been contemplating for a while that Prabhu Pad has given us everything. We might not realize it, and sometimes we look off out from outside. Uh, sorry, we look outside to see if. Uh, we lost so your, we audio. Are... your audio. Your oh, audio was gone. Ah, so, sorry, Maharaj. I was speaking on mute. Um, so I, uh, I, I was contemplating your point, Maharaj, that what you said that Prabhupada has given everything. Sometimes we tend to think with our limited consideration that something more um, outside, uh, in other maths or in other sampradayas. But when you look at it, you know, Prabhupada has given us everything, and it just requires a purity to realize that. Um, so that so thank you for making that statement uh, to reinforce uh, at least my my uh, uh, beliefs the question that comes out from this one maharaj is then uh, should we hear so yes we are hearing from prabhupad we are hearing from our shiksha and diksha gurus should we hear from other mats uh, or other gaudiya mats who are there uh, and uh, that's one thing that's coming to my mind maharaj uh, Why is, is it something that it's it's just it's just wanderlust that's what it is the mind wants to wander here and there it's just wants to go here wants to go there it's, to, it's, it's just the wandering of the mind if everything is given to us and more we can't even understand what was ever what's been given to us why is it so necessary that we want to hear from somebody else it's just the mind it's not necessary and if you hear certain things that are contrary then you become confused Prabhupada also commented on that many times I just gave the example of chastity <laughs> my wife she wants to try another husband for at least you know once a month for a little while so it's okay because you know so will the husband agree <laughs> It's like that. <laughs> the disciple and guru is like that. There's a chastity that 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 fo that foments the, the relationship in such a deep, deep, deep uh, understanding. There's like, just like there's a class of devotees that they don't do any service. They just go from place to place, trying to experience Krishna consciousness in different places. They don't fix themselves in any particular service. They go, they may go to Vrindavan, they may go to Mayapur, they may go his place, that place, this place, that They just go around and wherever they are, they chant and they hear, but they don't do any service. Their whole thing is just to go around. They don't make much advancement. They're hearing, they're chanting, they're associating, but they, they haven't fully uh, come to the process of fixing themselves in devotional activity. That means they haven't made a commitment. The commitment is, is to do whatever they want to do in the name of Krishna consciousness. So that is the same thing, going here, going there. It's, I would say you can do that after you know everything that Prabhupada said then you can do it. Maharaj, I, I'm, I'm so glad to hear because I was, I had, I was thinking along the same lines that you spoke and I, I was thinking that I need to confirm this with you because um, in the same thing as I was saying that, you know, Prabhupada has given us everything. 
And uh, unless you are at that realized platform where you can go into other sampradayas and explore some other philosophies and interfaith dialogues, you should you should just stick to your own sampradaya and to your own you know it's, institution. It's full. it's full. We'll never exhaust what Prabhupada has given us. It's not possible. I listen to Prabhupada every day, and twice within the last week he said the same thing in two different lectures. Srimad Bhagavatam contains knowledge of every subject matter. You simply have to uh, read it and understand. Every, and then, it's, then he said it in the same way. Everything you want to know is in Srimad Bhagavatam. There is military, there is health, there is politics, there's sociology, there's economics, there's sciences, everything there. Read, I mean, just for those of you who are scientifically minded, read three, third canto, 26th chapter of the third canto. Try to figure out what Prabhupada is saying in these, these, these translations are given by, these words are spoken by very scientific extremely scientific. It takes the scientific mind to somewhat understand the language, the way it's being presented. But it's the foundation for how devotional service works in a mathematical way. Now, every part of Bhagavatam is full. <laughs> And what we read is not everything that is there in that reading. There's much more. That's why it takes guru to awaken the knowledge. Questions further our understanding. So the whole process of knowledge is to read, to understand, to apply, to reading, understanding, applying, and developing uh, realization that comes by application, because application brings realization, and from realization comes skills, qualities, values. Mm -hmm. Five things you get from the process of reading. Read, understand, apply, um, realize characteristics, develop. That's, that is a process of hearing, proper hearing. It goes through these five stages. That's complete. Mm -hmm. We read, but sometimes we don't understand. We haven't gotten even beyond the understanding stage. What to speak about the application stage. And then when we, uh, then the application, if it's not given, if it's not done properly, we don't get the realizations. If you don't get the realizations and the characteristics, qualities, values, and skills that can come from that, are minimized or not even available. So it's a process. Guru, Sadhu, Shastra. Thank you, Maharaj. This has, this has cleared. So you need all three Guru, Sadhu, and Shastra. Yeah. I mean, you might find somebody from another month who speaks very interesting and, and says something that we haven't heard before. It's not that we haven't heard it. We haven't heard it in the same way, that's all. It's there.
Thank you, Maharaj. This has cleared uh, cleared a doubt that I had for for about two months. Um, and I think when you said about Prabhupada given everything, and the verse also dictated that we hear from the right source. Um, I think this this was a good time to clarify. Thank you, Maharaj. I I breakfast I listen to Prabhupada, lunch I listen to Prabhupada. Because this is when I get my nourishment, not so much from the eating, that I'm listening to Prabhupada while I'm taking prasad, and I can absorb myself in hearing Prabhupada at that time really nicely. And Prabhupada is not just speaking words, he's speaking in realization of the words. That is the potency. A lot of times you might get people who can speak nice words, but there's no realization. It's just there's some philosophy they put together. Thank you, Maharaj. Uh, Hare Krishna. And I, give, and I give you one more point. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No. <laughs> By doing that, you please Krishna. <laughs> And then by pleasing Krishna, you actually get to the essence of bhakti. You hear from Prabhupada, you will please Krishna. Yeah. And you'll please Prabhupada too. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Maharaj. Hare Krishna. Thank you for stimulating us. Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Hare Who's that speaking? This is Namrata, Maharaj. Hare Namrata. Yeah. So, uh, from the conversation, uh, which you recently did with Diptesh Prabhuji, I realized that uh, in, even if you're hearing other speakers of ISKCON, it is very necessary for you in your daily routine to hear Prabhupada. Hare Krishna. Why you, yeah, why do you want to hear outside? Just hear from Prabhupada. <laughs> No, 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 not outside, Maharaj. I'm talking about uh, speakers of ISKCON only. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because whatever the devotees in ISKCON are saying is coming from Prabhupada. It may come according to their realizations, but ultimately it's coming from Prabhupada. Whatever we know is in Prabhupada's books. Whatever we practice is given to us by Prabhupada. He did it in five ways. He did it in his books, his lectures, his conversations, his letters, and his personal darshanas. Five ways that Prabhupada gave us Krishna consciousness. The basis is the books, but his lectures are also just as good as his books. Mm -hmm. His conversations stimulate subject matters on various topics. We have morning walks, we have room conversations, we have special events, we have Srimad Bhagavatam classes, we have festival classes, we have Bhagavad Gita classes, we have Nectar Devotion classes, we have Sri Ishupanishad quest classes, we have Chaitanya Chari Tamita classes, all given by Srila Prabhupada. Okay, Maharaj. Uh, so, uh, can we randomly listen to, you know, sometimes maybe commentaries, sometimes maybe morning walks, sometimes maybe the videos or the tape recorded? Uh, is yeah. it just... 
necessary to listen or is there any specific uh, you know you should hear this first or hear this later you're asking whether we have we have certain protocol we should follow yes about protocol specifically about Prabhupada. well there are the ideal protocol but, but because the subject matter is pure in all aspects the protocol is ideal but one can somehow or other hear just like uh, it's recommended that when we approach Bhagavatam, we should approach from the first canto and then go gradually through the different verses all the way up. But then there are persons who find it difficult to do it systematic. So what we suggest is that they pick some place within the Bhagavatam or in Prabhupada's lectures or books and let them read there. Fine, that's good. But if you do it systematically, then you can see how things connect. And that's how I usually listen. I usually, like right now, I'm listening to Srila Prabhupada's first canto, Srimad Bhagavatam classes. So I heard the whole first canto, it took me a couple months. But I liked it so much, I thought, why go on to the second canto? I'm just going to go back over. So I went back over, the, and I'm hearing the first canto again. And some of the things I'm hearing again, and others I'm hearing for the first time. So, yeah, that's how, if you follow protocol, which is a little more systematic and given the knowledge, then you become, it becomes easier to explain the knowledge But, as Prabhupada said, you have a sweet ball, and if you bite it from the top, you bite it from the bottom, you bite it from the side, it's still sweet. <laughs> yes, Maharaj, that was a good example. <laughs> yeah. So, Maharaj, th uh, these days I am also uh, reading the first canto. So how I am following is, uh, I hear the, I, I read the a chapter, the verses, and uh, at the same time, I hear one, one of the prominent speaker of uh, ISKCON speaking about it, like example, Radhesham Prabhu. Um, I hear him, what he's speaking about the particular chapter, and then uh, I uh, read, uh, the the chapter which i'm going through so that i can get more clarity about it and i'm thinking then after after that i'll read prabhupada also what he is speaking about that particular verse or chapter that's a good system mm -hmm. that's a very good system yeah. okay thank you maharaj I think uh, that yeah. would make me more clear. Yeah, that'll that'll confirm a lot. You'll learn a lot in that using that particular approach. And Radhe Sham is, you know, he's to speak about Radhe Sham means to speak of somebody who's highly learned in the Shastra. <laughs> Yes, Maharaj, I find really very um, explanatory uh, uh, lectures from him. One is all, uh, there's one more speaker, his uh, Gorang Darshan Das. Uh, yeah, he's also written books too. And he systematically compiled a whole series of books on how to study Srimad Bhagavatam. He's completed nine cantos of systematic study, which is yes. the most, yeah, so Gauranga Darshan is, uh, yeah, he's brilliant. Yes, Maharaj, he, he explains uh, quite, uh, you know, he, he covers quite a lot, which gives a far more better idea and like uh, whatever questions are raised within your mind by the time you read are mostly covered. 
Mm -hmm. He's a regular writer now for Bhagavad Gita, uh, for Back to Godhead magazine. So you can read his articles every time a new, new Back to Godhead magazine is released. Mm -hmm. Yes, Maharaj. Sure, I will. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Gurunga Darshan is... Yeah. I know him personally. He, when I was staying at GEV, I used to meet with him and ask him questions on different subject matters. So while uh, reading the first canto, sometimes I'm, uh, this, these are two persons, I'm Radhesham Prabhuji and uh, Gauranga Darshan Das, which I'm referring to while reading the first canto. So I'm making it quite, in, I'm, I'm finding it quite informative. So that is why. I think you're getting much more information than all of us. <laughs> <laughs> I still need to confirm this with you, Maharaj. I mean, I, I'm very glad that you told me I'm I'm on the right path. Thank you for oh, that. Oh, yeah. I, I would like to do the same. Because Prabhupada's statements are concentrated. And these devotees, they unpack them. And they get into the more subtleties and more uh, manifestations of the different points and how they apply in different for, in different subject matters. Yeah. Garanga Darshan is a genius. Radhe Shyam is just like, you know, he's just spontaneous. Yes, Maharaj, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Continue. Maybe you can give a class once in a while and help us understand more. <laughs> Maharaj, let me gain some confidence first. Let it, okay, let me know when you're ready and we'll, we'll give you one of the days for, for the class and you can present as you heard. <laughs> oh my God, Maharaj. I'll write you first. I'll write in emails first. <laughs> Am I going uh, in a proper way? Yeah, you can do it. Mm -hmm. It's easy. Okay. Just, just hear, write down some notes, reread your notes, put it all together, and speak it. <laughs> okay, Maharaj, I'll try. That's if you have nice, said, I'll try. It's a nice service to the devotees. Okay, Maharaj. I'll do it. I'll, uh, I'll tell you, Maharaj, when I'm ready. Okay. But you have to do it this year, not next year. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Maharaj. Yes. Okay. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to you, Guru Maharaj, and all glories to the wonderful devotees who are asking such wonderful questions. It's so stimulating. My question is regarding reading, Guru Maharaj. You gave such a beautiful stepwise read, understand, apply, get realization, develop characteristics. So uh, may I know what stages of bhakti uh, these stages correspond to, like nishta or ruchi or bhajana kriya? Like, what stages does our reading follow as we traverse the path of bhakti? Well, the path of bhakti is nine stages, but it's characterized by certain symptoms of each stage. Uh, memorization of knowledge is not an indication of having knowledge. Application of the knowledge is the, is the, is the, is the goal of the knowledge. An application takes the part of characteristics and qualities. So we speak of gyan, theoretical knowledge, and vigyan, 
Vigyan means Visheshya, Visheshya, which means realized knowledge. So it has to go to that second stage in order to be complete. Mm. So that can happen in, in different levels of one's practice. Usually it comes on the stage of nishta or higher. As long as we're struggling with an art and liberty, it's hard to get realizations. Right. We get what we get, get intermittent realizations that come and go, but they don't remain unless we, you know, practice them. <laughs> So how can we get more fixed up in our reading, Guru Maharaj? I find myself getting distracted even as I am reading. Um, All right. I'll give you a method that I follow. I'm doing it as a service, but it's also a method for knowledge. Turn on your computer. Go to the Bhagavatam, the same place you have the book in front of you. Read read the verse, read the Sanskrit, read the translation, read the purport. Find something within the verse or in the purport or a combination of both that sort of illustrates the point of the verse. Copy and paste it and put it into a file and, and then uh, catalog it according to, to, to the number of the verse. Mm. And after you're done, go back over that particular section. Say you do maybe one chapter a day, or maybe even a half a chapter. So you've you pasted maybe 30 verses, 25 verses, and you got PowerPoints from each of those verses. And then when you go back over it, you reflect on those PowerPoint statements, and then you can remember how it relates to the rest of the, the theme that you were reading. So in other words, write it down and keep it in a file. And don't make it long. I, I, I have a, to give you my, I keep it three lines. Anything over three lines, I don't include. I have to find what I want within three lines. Because if it gets too lengthy, then you're just copying the whole verse. And, you, know, you just want to get to the essence. Hmm. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. That's a very useful tip. My humble obeisance is. Yeah, I've been doing that. I've done Canto 3 all the way up, and I'm on halfway through Canto 10 now. Hmm. So I've, I still have 10 to finish, 11, 12. And once I finish 12, I'll go back and finish one and two. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's something I've been working on for, you know, 10 years or more. Mm. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj, for guiding us, helping us. We are just little infants stumbling and falling, but you are so kindly leading us. I'm very grateful to you. Thank you so much. Uh, Sri Devi. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Did you get permission on that file I sent you? I haven't. Uh, I saw your email, but I haven't had a chance to see if I can open it yet. I'll do that right after the class. Okay, fine. I'll let you know. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare. So Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj, it's uh, 10 minutes past. Um, don't see any question in the chat. Okay, tomorrow's verse is first canto, seventh chapter verses one and two. It's with the Harrisburg devotees. It's at 12 noon UK time. 
It's our regular Harrisburg program that goes on every other Thursday. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Okay. Friday, we'll do verse number 26. Saturday, we'll do a class on uh, maybe Mother Lavanya. She's, she's uh, present on this discussion. Uh, are you there, Mother Lavanya? Yes, Guru Maharaj. Um, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. Hare Krishna, my obeisances, glory to Prabhupada. Yes, yeah, uh, for Saturday, Friday, uh, verse 26, that will that'll, uh, end this little series of verses. On Saturday, we'll do the holy name. Um, and then we'll do another, uh, either Sunday or Monday, we'll do a, a uh, class on health again. And the present world situation with this uh, COVID uh, uh, controversy. <laughs> Yes, good so that'll be on, so that'll, so Saturday will be the holy name and either Sunday and Monday will be on health because there's many things that need to be, what I think would be interesting to present for the devotees to know. And then on either Monday or Tuesday, we'll go back to a series of verses somewhere in the Bhagavatam again and I'll I'll have that uh, available soon. Mm -hmm. Yes, Guru Maharaj, sure. I'll update the calendar. And uh, once you confirm me about the uh, series of verses, um, I'll just update the calendar. Guru yeah, I'll, I'll find another section, which I think is the devotees will find it interesting. Yes, Thank you so much, Guru Thank you. So we'll thank you, stop Guru here. Maharaj. Yeah. So thank you, Guru Maharaj, for lovely class. Thanks, devotee, for joining this session. Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Gurudev ki jai, Anantakuti Vaishnav Brindhi ki jai. Jai. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Thank you for the class. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Archana City, Hare Krishna.